I had this idea for uh, the fire situation in California, so I'll get right to it. So the fires continue to rage across the California region and um, it's like I sh I've made a couple of videos about this so it seems to be a recurring uh, phenomenon I guess for lack of a better word every any given year so this is not just one idea or two ideas I'm hoping that others can pick up on something like this. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one thinking of ideas like this. Uh, and I don't think the idea should be implemented in the form that is actually being shared because there's all these dynamics to consider from the perspective of security in, in random order, uh, security, uh, the ecology, the impact, something like that, that this could have on the ecology. But then you got to ask yourself, the ecology is already burning. So, you know, whatever, whatever the, uh, so like without a longer debate about like how, like oh, there's humans around these uh, areas. So uh, how can these fires be like, I've shared a bunch of different ideas. Like I've even shared the idea of it's a it's a pretty radical idea, but actually moving a lot of humans to uh, which I don't think is a good idea either. Uh, like having a lot of humans being consolidated in uh, like a tighter spot on Earth because if something happens to uh, something does happen to that area, then uh, it's a single point of failure. So. But, but yeah, the population is spread out and right now there are fires. So how do you deal with it? And the point I'm trying to start with is that what solution is, the solution that's going to be implemented is going to have some consequences. It's, it's probably best to think of the uh, consequences, uh, unintended consequences, uh, as well as the, the actual impact, something like the implementation, implementation of the idea is going to have. So, with that being said, this is what I'm thinking of. So the, the fires still keep blazing. I was talking to somebody uh, just last week and there was a fire in their backyard and uh, like they, they could inhale the smoke. And this is when I, um, I, 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 I so the, the fires are impacting even like the Bay Area. I've been to the Bay Area personally, so, uh, I've actually, I have many friends living in uh, Southern California. So uh, I was talking to somebody else from the region there. Uh, I actually didn't ask them, but I don't think they're, the way they're living is directly impacted by the fires. Uh, okay, so I'll get to the idea at this point. How do you close this down? So here's the map of uh, the, the active state of what's going on with the fire situation uh, across the California region. Uh, I'm just using Cal Fire as a resource. So, you know, a lot, a lot of these uh, fires are contained. Um, the, uh, I guess they're, they're fires on a smaller scale that, like the bigger fires seem, seem, seem to get contain, I don't know what these graphs actually represent. Uh, I think they represent the total number of uh, so the actual area that is impacting in acres. So one of these graphs represents how much of the fire is contained. So I think that's in blue because this says 97% and the graphs here. So that's what I would think, of. although it'd be useful to have a little bit of ledger somewhere. Uh, yeah, that makes sense because this one is zero percent contained, so it's all red. Yeah, that makes that makes rational sense. Okay, some of these are not Cal Fire incidents, so I guess I don't know how the, again the jurisdic jurisdiction works, but uh, that's what's happening uh, from the present. So the idea that I'm thinking of right now is there's a lot of um, rapid innovation in the in the world of 
uh, exoskeletons. Um, I was watching this video the other day, and I hope it's okay to share this. And I'm not trying to promote one party or another. This just came up because I kind of go through CNET once in a while. And so take a look at this. I'm gonna fast forward this a little bit. The pilot's arms control the outside legs of the machine, and the pilot's legs control the power. Their position is translated back to the exoskeleton, and the pilot only reveals the position of the machine and how much. So this is like straight out of Pacific Rim, and uh, the way. It is right now, like this video is like about a month old, uh, less than a month old. So it's still quite clunky, but I could like envision through rapid iterations, something like this, like you could, first of all, make it lighter using like maybe like better materials or materials that are, have better tensile strength, maybe are a little bit flexible, but are lighter. So you can kind of look at the bones of, birds and the bones of how like the bones for birds are structured very differently versus how our bones are structured so you can look at like you know biology is like in the realm of biomimicry like you'll see how to make this less uh heavier so well basically lighter make it um, bend uh, like flexible and make it smoother because like i said it's like clunkier right now and you'd want to do this because as this kind of constructs move through the ecology, you don't want it to like cause damage just because it's going into a specific terrain. And, uh, you know, you don't want it to just, cause I don't know like how, what is actually in the, under the floor of the forest. So there could be a whole bunch of, uh, there could be networks of, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, I I don't know what's under the floor. So but you don't want this thing to if it th if this thing has to go like two, three, five, six, ten times in the actual forest any given year, then you don't want it to destroy everything within its path because that just defeats the purpose, right? Because you could just chop down the forest, you know, like you know, like so. So that, like, I don't know if that if this now like if this way of thinking makes sense. But so that's what I would do, like if if this device was going to be retrofitted for putting out fires. The other thing I would obviously do is make it like narrower or thinner because it's too wide right now. It's not going to be able to pass through trees and whatnot. Um, so I, I would make it. I don't know how thin it has to be for it to be able to kind of walk between uh, trees, but. I guess at that point you could say, well, we could just use uh, one of the robots from Boston Dynamics. So I forget what their robot is called, but it does all these tricks and everything. And I shared this idea in the previous video. Uh, like also like in random order, security is very important for something like this. Cause say it's like, like, you know, there's no fire incident and this thing is stored somewhere. You don't want somebody to like break into that system like through software, I mean, obviously, or maybe physically too, and redesign, the, reconfigure the software, and then you have a huge problem on your hands. So the, the military has to be involved in a project like this, not just from the perspective of like how it's gonna be designed, but also uh, how to secure the facilities uh, during, after, before the event. Uh, because like I said, in the hands of, People wish to do malicious activities with an invention like this uh, could be actually pretty bad because, or you could like have a, uh, yeah. So like not gonna go into the domain of like conscious or self-aware systems and whatnot. Um, but yeah, just in the hands of malicious actors, something like this. I guess you could say the same thing about any technology, but. So security has to be really thought of is what I'm saying. And I've, I haven't thought about that a lot, but like, I, I think that system would have to be pretty transparent 
with the ability to be able to backtrack and you know like see who's doing what uh, and have a complete history that you can kind of go through without spending a ton of time time going through the logs and whatnot. Anyway, so so this is one tech, and then what I was thinking is this idea is a couple components, and what I was thinking was, and I, I oh, in the previous video I said a fire truck is a truck, and uh, what what other examples did I use? So there's a fire truck. Um, I can't, I can't, I, I should have watched that video before posting. It would be a long day for me too. Fire truck is a truck. Basically, the point I was trying to make was every invention that is used right now in the context of putting fires is some invention that was repurposed or redesigned in order to be able to serve a new function. Um, and then I kind of got into like the drones uh, to be able to kind of showcase that a new kind of device would could could be or like that was just to demonstrate just like one invention that could come about that would be really useful in putting out fires. However, from a from the perspective of context, that uh, device would not be super useful because that like a drone is going to be more useful in a urban environment where you know like you're talking about fire in a taller building or something. But what I was trying to like get to in like with the point I was trying to like get to or uh, mention in that video is that using an AFWorks kind of a model, many such uh, uh, designs could be kind of like uh, enabled uh, you know, once you have like a structure put in place specifically for the purpose of uh, getting more designs out that can effectively tackle the situation that we're uh, dealing with right now with fire and in the future with climate change. So I think there should be a specific um, body that should be uh, incentivized for tackling this because I, I think this is beyond uh, I think I'm not sure because I don't live in the region and I haven't looked at this in a ton of detail but it looks like it's something that one X prize is probably not gonna solve. Uh, I'm not saying there shouldn't be X prizes for something like this, but I think you need like uh, something that could evolve as more time passes by and, and more of an AF works kind of a model, some, something that's woven into the fabric of how uh, uh, DOD functions as an institution, and how it works with all the other agencies is something that would be needed. So I guess my, again, so my goal was to like use more of an AFWorks kind of a model to, again, uh, get more of these designs out. So this, what I was thinking is, what if you had exoskeletons or these mech suits, and then you load them up in, I actually Googled this up. I was, I Googled how to link different trailers together, but it seems like there's a term for it. It's called the road train. So these images that I'm using are uh, Creative Commons license. So. The road train basically looks like one truck. Uh, instead of one trailer behind it, you've got a couple of different trailers. Uh, oh, this one's actually got some really close. Anyways, this looks like some military technology. But anyways, so, so you basically, as you can see in the pictures, have multiple trailers behind each one of the trucks. And so, what you, well, theoretically, what could happen is, uh, and I. I think I closed the, oh, the, the, so if, if there's a higher probability of fires emerging in specific regions, then and in the previous video, I, I uh, shared a, uh, there was a map. Uh, I don't know how to bring it up right now. Uh, let me see if I can bring it up. Okay, hopefully nothing embarrassing is popping up right now. <laughs> I want to record this video again. Uh, I feel like I said it's in most videos. Uh, yeah, what was I gonna do? I was gonna bring up a map, fire map, Cali, Fornia. So be
there was a map of uh, which kind of resources are available depending on where you look at uh, for the map of California. And what I was thinking is you could have like specific depots and, you know, again, the security aspect has to be thought through. I think these depots should be in a fire facility so that, you know, nobody can trick anyone like the people in the fire station uh, so that they would uh, potentially steal these robots or anything like that. Um, there's a bunch of ways to do this, but I don't think it should be at an offsite facility with like remote monitoring. Cause you could always, somebody could always like overtake the video feed and bad things could happen. So it, there should be some kind of human uh, presence with like redundancy and, and re like a combination of that and remote monitoring. Cause yeah, you don't want these things to get uh, stolen and then uh, redesigns and, and there should be, Probably be a, should be a regulation element from the get go that uh, you need like only fire and like institutions that assist the fire department can go into a particular region to to use these constructs. So it, it's not necessarily going to look like this mech suit. You know, there's there's actually uh, a lot of innovations happening in the realm of exoskeletons and uh, just kind of put exoskeleton in um, Google or YouTube and you're gonna see how quickly this area is changing. Uh, this one is what I saw two years ago and since then uh, like a lot of uh, interesting stuff has happened there's like this company out of uh, south korea actually they've made this really giant it's called a mecca m-e-c-h-a um and and uh that seems like a little bit like i don't know if if you need oh it's like something like this it's not necessarily this one but you don't need a much oh that looks like human spirit anyways you don't need a machine that big in order to be able to tackle fire but what you could have is you could store like, a, a, like, you know, I don't know how many of these machines you will require. Equip them with some fire suppressant. So you have, you know, like at the back or like maybe they could just have this on the side. I don't know where. These are all ro like th these are uh, remotely operated machines. I don't, think we, I don't think we should make this autonomous. This is my personal uneducated opinion. Uh, I'm not a roboticist or an AI uh, ethicist or a, 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 like a background. I don't have a background in security, but I wouldn't make these autonomous just in case something were to go wrong. And uh, I would put a human in the loop. Now, when it comes to putting a human in the loop, what I would do is I'm just waiting for this video, uh, this thing to minimize again. What I would do is I would then use something like an Omni and I'm not promoting products here. It could be another product. Uh, I, I was thinking of the original, uh, uh, like if somebody is like growing up in the eighties and the nineties, there was a movie uh, with Pierce Brosnan. It's called the lawnmower man and the negative aspects of those movies aside for just, I, I think it got a little dystopian on the VR side of things. But if you just look at, what the, tech, the the movie was showcasing purely from an artistic merit of what uh, how VR could evolve. I think that was a pretty accurate uh, summation of how VR will eventually evolve uh, in 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 terms of the human and uh, the, the machine interaction. So I think that the lawnmower man was fairly accurate with regards to what we see with products like Omni today. Only that in in this situation the individual is not suspended from air, uh, you know, and it, like they're in this virtual reality construct, but you, you, you could, you could very well do it that way. So it really depends what the design of this construct is going to look like with regards to what the intended outcome should be, which in this case, considering like the example that has been shared, uh, I'm thinking the robots can be remotely, operated by uh, operators, firefighters from a remote facility. Now that remote facility could actually be in one of the trailers within reason, 
then the security aspect has again has to be really considered. What if uh, the, air, the the area surrounding the trailers is in danger? Then there's there's no means to be able to notify the people inside because they're gonna have their headgear on and everything. So, but it 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 can in, in for all intents and purposes be remotely operated, right? So the actual station where the fire per, like the firefighters really are can be completely on like a it could be at a complete remote facility it could be even like it could be in another state or even another country right so there's like there it, this is not just i'm not saying this because i'm thinking of this but this could this could have like a a pretty significant impact if something like this were to be developed because we could have uh, not only would it create lots of new jobs but uh, firefighters would never get hurt at least tackling starting with forest fires uh, in the future the firefighters would never get hurt again they wouldn't even hopefully like you know the constructs that they put in uh, on them they wouldn't even get a scratch now it will get uh, fairly uh, i don't think you should do eight hour shifts in the vr gear so you know this is this is exhausting work so uh yeah so but, but basically what i'm suggesting is i guess if you were going to synthesize the idea remotely operated mecha suits or exoskeleton suits that firefighters operate I, I was going to say the word again remotely again uh and the mechas have the fire suppressing technology on board i don't know if it's going to be co2 or if it's going to be um foam or uh something else i don't know what it's going to be uh you know the ecological impact has to be again really considered and the uh uh, the security has to be really thought through because uh, like you know, I've said two times, I'm going to say it again, because you don't want this to get uh, broken into. And then uh, that could be quite disastrous. Uh, I'm not going to talk about cybersecurity right now, but uh, this is not something you could uh, like, I don't think something like this should be on the internet. Uh, so maybe you need to develop like a specific uh, network for uh, fire personnel. Um, if there is a uh, DOD specific network, maybe it could like, I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not going to spec speculate on that because I don't know how the networks are really structured, but I would, uh, yeah, I would create like a, separate network for this if i was going to design it from the ground up and i would only give access to people who are in the fire department or people who need access and all the access control would be monitored on a real-time basis if there is an intrusion it would be detected right away if uh, somebody is physically touching these devices when they're not supposed to that would be detected right away unless it's like uh you know during peace times or during times of when there's no incident and you have like kids from schools going over to a fire facility, then maybe they can interact with the robots, right? But uh, other than that, uh, yeah, the security has to be really thought through. So, yeah, this is an idea I was thinking about last night, and uh, probably took too much, too too long of a time to talk about this idea. But the idea is really simple. Again, I'm repeating myself, but mechas or exoskeletons combined with uh, road uh, trains uh, with the fire suppressing te technology embedded or uh, it, 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 like equipped, the, the machines are equipped uh, with, the, with the suppressing technology. You can always go back to the trailer and uh, get a fresh stock of the fire suppressing technology. And then the firefighters are for the better part remotely operating these robots uh, there are uh, fire personnel on the scene uh, with 
you could have like eyes and ears on the like on the ground in the future you may not need that but um, i guess maybe, maybe you do i don't know but um th there should be like also like how like a zone so like say something catastrophic was going to happen with one of these machines and if that does they tip or fall over or roll over so there, there should be like very clear guidelines operating procedures that uh, the human humans will maintain this much distance from these machines uh yeah if we can get this to work the the benefits are significant uh firefighters would never get hurt uh, or, or like there will not be an injury or death for fire personnel ever again and um that's my idea for the day so the purpose of the, sharing these ideas is to have other people uh also kind of build up on these ideas and this is how ideas get better and so i'm hoping somebody else will pick up on something like this hopefully somebody will start a company uh I would I would start this company. I would uh Yeah, I love I love the California region. I uh You have to like figure out if this is a good idea. Yeah, if, if somebody from the fire department reaches out to me uh, in US, in California, or in Canada, uh, or somebody who is serving the fire department, uh, I would offer my services for free uh, what, in whichever capacity as a consultant. Uh, Yeah, I think I, although I, was, I should focus my energies toward the goal I, I've identified. Uh, but yeah, I would, I, I would gladly offer my services for, for free. Uh, within reason, like if somebody's gonna go on creating like a hundred million dollar company, uh, then, you know, their, their intention is to make money by, from doing, for, for me, I, I wanna like, I just don't want to see uh, injuries or death as these fire rages. And I also don't want my, uh, the people I know get negatively impacted with what's going on with the fires. So that's where I'm coming from. I'd love to assist. All right. Have a good one, guys and girls.